Radio. This is Lori LeBay, your host with a frog in her throat. I've got the crud, so um, you're just going to have to work with my voice here today because we have an absolutely fabulous show for you. I cannot wait to have these women um, talk, um, and so I'm not going to take up a lot of time in the front end. I do always like to just uh, welcome our new listeners to Alzheimer Speaks Radio and let you know a little bit about us. Bottom line, Alzheimer's Speaks is an advocacy-based company providing multiple platforms to shift our dementia care culture from crisis to comfort. We're also known as a media platform out there because of all the the different uh, forms that we have with the website, the radio show, the dementia chats, the blogs, etc. We believe that by joining forces and sharing knowledge is really the only way that we're going to shift our dementia care and having these everyday conversations are really, uh, they're just fun for me as a host. I I learn so much as I know our listeners do from all of you that write in and comment. So I thank you for that. At our core, we also believe that collaboration is the only way that we're going to win this battle against dementia. And I know that's working because of all of your likes, your clicks, and your shares. You see, you got us named the number one influencer online um, for Alzheimer's, according to Share Care and Dr. Oz. And that would not have happened without you just taking those few seconds to share our content with your sphere of influence. Um, And that is so important for all of us to do because we need to know where the resources are. And today you are going to learn about some great, great um, resources and two women that you aren't going to forget once you hear them talk. Um, They are just absolutely fabulous and one of the new phenomenons um, in our industry that you're going to hear more and more about. I also want to just thank again our um, our programming team for our dementia-friendly crews, Cindy Lazinski, Becky Watson, Harry Urban, Michael Ellen Bogan, Lori Shear, and Mary Reed. Um, it was a fabulous time, and I still have not written um, a detailed article on it just because of being sick, but I will be getting to that shortly. Our sponsors were absolutely wonderful to us, and so, again, I just need to give a shout-out to John Hopkins for the sending us the 36-hour day and a loving approach to dementia care. Uh, music for Wellness, uh, Becky Watson's company was absolutely fabulous. Um, Brightview Senior Living, who sponsored the book Cruising Through Caregiving by Jennifer Fitzpatrick. The American Senior Magazine, um, Anita Jader, who was our photographer. Uh, Free to Go Mobility, uh, the Art Kit. Um, the Dementia Handbook, the little um, book for Alzheimer's caregivers, uh, the calendar cards, and um, Memory Cafe Directory, along with Memory Joggers, Care to Plan, Call Alert Center, um, and 15 Minutes of Fame by Trin Rose Seeley and the Footprint Idea. Um, These people were absolutely fabulous. They understood our concept and um, jumped right in with it. And again, we are looking forward to doing some more dementia-friendly travel in the future. So we will keep you posted on that. With no further ado, I want to introduce um, two fabulous women that I um, was honored to meet when they came to Minnesota. Um, Kathy Braxton is the Chief um, Education Officer of Silver Dawn Training Institute. And she has worked in the aging industry for over 20 years, 
managing memory care units, um, directing activities programs, doing case management, support group facilitation, and in-home care. She has completed all of her coursework for the, her master's degree in health psychology and is a published author and blogger for the Chicago Tribune. Welcome, Kathy. How are you today? I am great. Thank you so much for having me today, Lori. Well, I am excited to have both you and Tammy on the show. So let me go ahead and introduce Tammy. Uh, Tammy Newman is the Chief Operations Officer for Silver Dawn Training Institute, and she has uh, studied improv under the direction of, is it, um, I'm going to ask you for help here on this one, on how she pronounces her name, it's, Tammy. It's, it's Antoine. Antoine McKay. I knew I was going to was going to crucify it. So thank you. Um, and for the past four years, she's done that. And Tammy has spent over 20 years also in the aging industry in various capacities, marketing, memory care program, uh, facilitation. She is also a published author and has completed her casework for nursing home administrator. So welcome, Tammy. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having us. I know that you have had the crud for seven days, so we're we're extremely happy that you're able to have us on today. Yep. Well, and I know you two girls will carry the show because they are full of energy and conversation, <laughs> and and uh, we are going to get all kinds of insights from them. So I, I'm just I'm so excited to talk about your new book, which is called Start Yes. And I'm going to throw this to. Um, Kathy first, and then uh, Tammy, I'll have you jump in afterwards. But Tammy, what inspired you guys to write this book? Start with yes. So what inspired us to write the book? So um, with Tammy and I collaborating for almost four years now, what we constantly saw as we talked through creating content for caregivers is that there was nothing out there that was simple and easy to attain that could meet everybody's um, needs, meaning anybody in a family from the children all the way up through the adult children in a family that would also transcend to work with professionals. We kept hearing the term continuity of care, but then we weren't really seeing it in the industry as we were working in it. We were seeing family members using different terminology, staff members using different terminology, and no one really bringing true continuity of care. So what we felt was most important was bringing together something that was simplistic, easy to attain, something you didn't need to memorize, and that could be applied with any person, regardless of the type of dementia that they're living with or um, really any person at all. Um, The techniques that we describe in the book are techniques that I use with my husband. I use them with my children. Um, They become something I use often with my son who has autism. So we felt that it needed to be more of a communication concept that would create that continuity of care rather than a script or a large manual. So that's what motivated us to start to put this Start With Yes book together. Oh, I I love that because what you're saying is it comes from the heart, not, you know, not the mind. And and it becomes natural. Instead of the exactly. um, awkwardness of not being who you <laughs> truly are at heart, which um, right. you know ca- causes all other kinds of red flags to pop up. Um, Tammy, anything that you want to add to you know the inspiration behind the book? It just looks like a fun yeah. book. Your cover design and everything. It just it's it's like one <laughs> of those things that's like okay, this isn't going to depress me. This is this is going to help me. <laughs> yeah, you know. I think, you know, just kind of tagging on what what Kathy said a little bit, you know, our goal is really to meet people where, where, where they're at, right? And I think one of those things that this book really helps with is that it helps one to, to create this, this language that you don't have to turn on and off. So oftentimes when we learn how to communicate with a person with dementia, we learn it and we use it with the person with dementia, but we don't use it with anybody else. What's mm-hmm. interesting about what we've created is that this, like, like Kathy said, hey, maybe 17 years ago before I got divorced, if I had these tools, maybe I wouldn't have gotten divorced. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> these, 
these tools are totally things that we can use every single day with anybody in our lives. I had to call the DMV today. You know how fun that is, right? Um, and I used the tools on the person I was talking to. So, you know, it, and what happens when we do that, when we make it a way of life, um, when we do that, then I don't have to learn to switch it on and off. So when I go, if I'm going to visit mom in the nursing home, okay, now what do I have to do? What are the things I have to say? How do I have to act? You already know this. This is a skill that you're honing and working on every day. So that's what I believe is one of the cool things. The other thing about this book that really inspired us is that we wanted to be able to have information for people, especially family caregivers, someone that's taking care of mom or dad, aunt, uncle, whoever that may be in the home. The amount of time that they have to actually read a book is limited, right? Because sometimes they're working a full-time job and taking care of mom and dad in the rest of the time. So their time is limited. So one of the things that we did I have a, a great friend who is actually taking care of her father-in-law in her home. So she is working full-time taking care of um, her loved one. And we sent this to her, and I said, I want you to sit down, read it. I want you to time yourself in how long this takes. It took her 40 minutes to read the entire book. So like Kathy said, I, has said before, if someone takes the book and reads maybe five, ten minutes every night, in a, in a week's time they can read that book. And it's not so overwhelming that it's, it's going to confuse them or, you know, take, want them to take the book and throw it away or use it as, you know, the doorstop, whatever that might be. It's, <laughs> it's something that's going to walk through. We, we also broke it down because we talk about four rules of improv and we talk about four rules of four pillars of empathy. So in this book, we only talk about two rules of improv in this one. So we want to start out easy, and that's what we did, I think. I think we achieved that pretty well within this book. Yeah, I would mm -hmm. agree. And I think the reason that, that uh, just to tag on what she's saying, you know, when you have a book that's daunting or a manual that's huge or skills that you have to memorize, it can really not only burden a person down and make them frustrated and not get through it all, but it also can break down in the confidence. And what we were seeing is that if caregivers, regardless of education level, regardless of their age, if they could have an inkling more of confidence when it came to communicating, they would make such a big difference in their, their lives and the person that's living with dementia. And so that was another big goal of ours was, can it be a short read, something someone can attain, anyone can attain. We've given this book to caregivers that are in their 40s and then asked them to hand that book down to their teenage children when they're finished. Because this common language, if we can build it within the home structure and then we take it out into the world, we use it if we visit the nursing home, we use it when we visit mom, when mom comes to visit us. This common language and the ability to use these skills will build confidence and as Tammy said, you know, improv, there are endless ways in which you can practice and strengthen that improv muscle. It is not something you have to turn on and off. And the more you practice it with the skills that we've given you and the games that we walk people through, the easier it's going to be, the more natural it's going to become. And like you said, it will become then a way of life, not just um, a scripted approach that you turn on when you walk into assisted living. Well, and that is that is wonderful. I, I love that this this book is short, simple, um, and to me, that is one of the biggest mistakes in this industry. Is I still think so many people are approaching it thinking it's got to be complicated, it's got to be daunting, it's got to be overwhelming. Oh, and I'm I'm so tired of the negativity because it's like, you know, if you feel your life is daunting and overwhelming, you're not going to be a real happy person. You're not going to be real motivated. You're probably going to be depressed. And and that is not what people who are going through this need. You know, they need to be uplifted. They need to be given hope. They need to know that there is life with this disease. And, I, I you know, I you can tell I'm passionate on this, too. It's just to me, it's just been ridiculous. I, I get tired of the the doom and the gloom with this. And granted, we have to be realistic about safety of others and 
things like that. But um, there's so much beauty and joy to be had yeah. if we if we just let go. Um, one of the things that you have in the book, you note you only have a hundred bullets. It's, um, <laughs> it's, <clears throat> it's not blindly pushing your own agenda that will uh, enrich the world. It's your ability and willingness to understand, anticipate, address, serve, and support the lives of others that will. And I, I believe that with my whole heart. I think so many people get stuck in their own silos and, you know, and their egos just keep welling up and it's like, oh, pop that bubble. Let's get real here. You're not the (laughs) only one with an idea or a concept. You know, let's work together and let's have joyful conversations and let's have, you know, and we can have confrontation in a, in a civil fashion. We don't always have to agree. Um, And that's one of the things I love about the radio show is, we don't always agree, but um, we can have a civil conversation and broaden both sides of our views in terms of how we're going to go forward and approach things. And right. I, I, and, and so I, I love, I, I can't say enough good things about you guys and, and the work that you do. Um, you know, the book, you just, like I said, it's it, from the cover to finish, it's very upbeat. It's... Um, it's easy to go in and just grab something um, and come back and, and pick it up. It's easy to pass on. It's, it'll fit in your purse or most people's purses, you know, unless you've just got a little teeny clutch. Um, right. But you, you, right. you carry those anyway, right? <laughs> you know, I, I do because I stuff it in my briefcase then. So when I'm traveling, <laughs> it's, it's nice and little. Um, but one of the other things that I, I loved in your book is you have your emotional agreement. We think we listen, but very rarely do we listen with real understanding, true empathy. Yes, listening of this, uh, let's see, <clears throat> yes, listening of this very special kind is the one, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the most potent uh, forces for change that I know, and that's by Carl Rogers. And that is so true in this fast-paced world. People do not listen. They don't really yeah. hear. They're too busy figuring out what their reply is. And, and you know, you talk about the nonverbals. Um, you guys are so in tune with that. Do you mind kind of sharing a little bit about the nonverbal communication in you know, starting starting with yes and removing your agenda and just looking at communication differently. Yeah, you know, um, and, and Kathy can step in any time. When we, when we um, talk about improv, one of the really, when you ever go to Second City or um, here in Chicago, you know, we're big on improv, so there's Second City and there's Improv Olympics or otherwise known as I.O., or you even watch whose line is it anyway, there's, there's some foundational rules of improv that move that scene along. And, and there's one that anybody that, you know, has gone through their midlife crisis, they know this one rule, they've taken it home, they use it all the time, right? And, mm-hmm. and it's called yes and. It's simple. It's two words. And, and that's where, to me, the beauty of this comes about. Two words. Yes means to be in agreement and means to add something to it. So, so we're not talking about denying. We're talking about being in agreement. And then we, we break that being in agreement down, and we break that down into different ways you can be in agreement. So, you know, like I tell our classes, you can simply be in agreement by saying, awesome, rock on, that's so cool. You know, any way that you say that you can be in agreement verbally, right? That's a verbal agreement. And then I always talk about, the next one we talk about is being in agreement physically. So that's where body language comes in. So I can be in agreement with someone just by the way my body's positioned, and, and that helps me to get into the, the world of the person with dementia. So there's so many different layers to the body language. Uh, it's um, and the more I learn about it and the more we research about it, the more I love it. And it's always been the, the one piece that I love so much because 
as a person with dementia starts to lose that ability to express themselves with words, they're expressing themselves in other things. Um, we refer to this as reasonable reactions. We refer to this as just using their body language to express what's going on. So it's us being able to really interpret what's going on in a much different way. Um, so it's one, reading their body language. Oftentimes, to me, body language is also a gateway to connection. So, you know, I, I look at, there was a resident that I had in a memory care community, and she was someone that walked, and she walked and walked and walked, and she in her previous life walked a lot. And our staff at the time, at the place that I used to work at, they, you know, they're like, we're having so much problem, we can't get her to sit down to eat. But they would go and they would grab her to take her to lunch, right? So what would happen there is what we would term a reasonable reaction. She'd be really upset because someone just grabbed her out of her walk, right? And when I look at that, you know, me walking down the streets of Chicago, somebody grabs me, what am I going to do? I'm going to take that big purse that I have and I'm going to hit them over the head. Reasonable reaction. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when I, was, when I would go and I would start this walk with her, I just went and I used body language in that, that sense. I just went and I walked with her. I walked with her at her pace. Her and I would just start walking together. It connected us, right? And, and then I would slow our pace down. We were still connected. We really weren't talking much. She would talk a little bit, but it was, it was words that didn't necessarily make a sentence, but I continued that conversation. And whatever her face was showing me, was she showing me happiness? I reflected that back. Was she showing um, sadness? I reflected that back. So it was a way for me to connect with her, right? And then as I slowed her down, as we walked and I just slowed my pace down, you know, I would start being, oh, I'm hungry, rubbing my belly, smelling the air, all those kind of things. So the body language has, has that effect. It can help us to connect with that person. Um, it also has the effect, the, the reverse effect, I guess. I don't know if this is the right term, but Kathy can step in if she wants to. But what body language am I portraying to the person with dementia? They become hyperfluent in that, right? Mm -hmm. They become, they have such a, for lack of a better term, like a sixth sense in understanding our body language and feeding off of that as well. Does that make sense? Yes. Makes a ton of sense. <laughs> ton, ton of I'm sense. sorry. I, and I'm not going to apologize, but I get passionate about this stuff. <laughs> you love body language. That is your, I you do. love that I one. Love that it. is your favorite way of being in agreement because you're a very physical person. So when we're on stage and you take that on, I mean, your hands are going. And, and one of the great things that she does, I mean, she is, she is so good with this. One of the one things we do when we talk on stage about being in agreement physically is um, I'll take a seat and just, you know, have a very uh, depressed body state. You know, so my head will be turned down, my hands will be fidgeting, I'll be looking at the floor. And, and you can really sense a difference when we show this in the way in which she would approach me back 20 years ago when she and I were both activity directors and we were taught, you know, our job is, you know, be that cruise director and corral everybody with enthusiasm and joy into the bingo game. And you get them in there any way you could. And so oftentimes we would approach a resident. I know I've done this many times. I would approach a resident who did not seem very enthusiastic. And I would have that, as Tammy refers to, the Julie McCoy attitude. You know, <laughs> I'm jumping and skipping and I'm, you know, let's go to bingo. And, and what was happening is I was not in agreement with that resident at all physically. And so I create a lot more disconnection between us. Um, than I would have if I would have gotten down at their level, if I would have tried on the same facial expression that they had. And what's so cool about that is that is an improv technique called mirroring. And it seems like it's just a game, but in reality, all the research has shown that when you can mirror somebody's facial expressions, you will take on that emotion yourself. And so it will heighten your own awareness of what that feeling is that's going on inside the person you're talking to. And so when you mirror and model that same body language, you can inside yourself introspectively say, 
wow, the last time I was like this, I felt really down. I felt really lonely. I felt really sad. These are the gifts that I'm being given from this person in a way to create a connection. And I can approach them in that way and say, it looks like you're not feeling too well. Is there something I can do to help you? Or sometimes it isn't even in words at all. It's just touching of the hand, rubbing of the back, just sometimes sitting next to somebody and giving them the warmth of another human. And so there's so much depth. There's so much depth to body language. And I think what this industry has been missing thus far is that we have not been willing as a group of professionals, we have not been willing to look at ourselves and say, what are we bringing to the table? What are we bringing to every single interaction that we have? And our approach is one, when we look at body language, when we look at being verbally in agreement, when we look at being emotionally in agreement, we're constantly asking ourselves, when have I been there? Um, how can I tap into my own stuff to help unearth the gifts that this person is giving me? And it's not that hard. It's just being introspective. It's just being aware of what we are bringing to the table and how are our reactions, how are our responses affecting what a person who's living with dementia is feeling and putting out back. Because yeah. as Tammy explained, when you have a staff member who just pulls somebody from a walk, and then we care plan that they're becoming disruptive and they strike out. Well, we're missing a huge piece of the puzzle here. And that huge piece of the puzzle is us because what caused her to react that way was us and our approach. And so we need to continually be in check with ourselves. And that is, I think what makes us very, very different from other models of care that are out there right now is that we really, we wholeheartedly believe it needs to be an introspective approach. We need to be looking at ourselves constantly. And it's not a selfish thing at all. It's, it's keeping in mind what is my ultimate goal here. And as Tammy will say time and time again, her favorite, favorite rule of improv is what is our ultimate goal? It's to make our partners look good. Mm hmm yeah, I, I think um, I think you hit the head on the nail, um, or you hit the nail on the head. See, I'm talking in reverse now. <laughs> That's <laughs> my okay. cold medicine. Um, but I think it is so critical, not just like you said, not just in the world of dementia, but I mean, look at our world. It's like self-destructing as far as communication goes with people. Yeah. Everybody needs to pay attention to this and see the conflict between between verbal words and nonverbal and, and analyze that and to know that, you know, you can't just put the Stepford wife smile on and fool everybody. It doesn't work. Nope. And, yeah. and I loved when you said, you know, that the hypersensitivity that, that people with dementia have, and, you know, it, it comes with any other disability, you know, doctors will say, you know, if you lose this, you typically gain this. You know, because you, you ha it has to balance out. There's that yin and that yang, and so you know, if it's if it's um, reading our nonverbals or even um, you know sounds being louder, um, colors being brighter, you know, all of those things are shifting and changing, and we have to we have to learn how to work with those and understand right. what we see is not what they see. And what we see isn't what anyone else sees, period. We have to, like, right. we have to like stop thinking that everybody sees what we see and have a conversation exactly right. about what we see and what we feel and why we feel. You know, where do those emotions come from? Well, they come from our own personal histories, which are all different. I, this is such a, a basic thing. It drives me crazy. Because it's like, yes. how how did we miss this for so flippin' long? I mean, yeah. How, yeah. how have we been so ignorant of how to care for one another? Yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating because I think the way I've described it is that it seems as though we, we've always, well, for the time that I've been in the industry, it seems as though we've looked at persons who are living with dementia as if they're alien or foreign and there's no way in which we can understand them that the word salads that they use make no sense, and so we're just going to write it off as being aphasia, um, that their body language or their aggression striking out or being, you know, angry 
or wanting to sit in their rooms for, for so long is in some way, shape, or form this, you know, for lack of a better term that we hate so much, behaviors, these behaviors that just happen because someone has this disease. And I think what's unfortunate is we're, we have not done a very good job up until now at looking at people's history, true, 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 deep history. You know, what are their stress responses? What are they What are they proud of? What brings them purpose in life? What is the love language that they feel most appreciated? You know, if we can start to excavate that kind of information, we're going to look at the way in which a person living with dementia is expressing themselves so much differently. It will be so much deeper because when we look at it for ourselves, we'll say, you know, this is how I feel appreciated. Now I understand how Mrs. Jones feel appreciated. I can implement that into my care with her and we will have a more meaningful peak moment of success. So um, it's, it's really becoming much more introspective. And like you said, looking at someone's past, looking Mm -hmm. at who they are, each person as an individual and unearthing that information and then using all of those gifts to help us move the conversation as Tammy says, moving that scene forward. Yep. It, it's so, it's just so critical. Um, and I think the only way we could do that is we, we have to get everybody to slow down. You know, uh, I, I think yeah. that's been one, one of the problems is we were not in, in tune. I mean, you look at the kids, I mean, they don't even answer the phone. You can only text them. You know, right. our, our, communi- our communication skills are really changing and they're changing our outcomes greatly. And and we've got to get a handle and understand um, what is happening and how to leverage the best set of skills to communicate, so that we can, like you said, move that scene forward and and get back to to living in some some form of peace instead of this this drudgery and this turmoil and you know um, even you know we talk about the words that we use the the caregiver versus care partner, care companion, it, it sets us up. And there's so many of those in the industry too that that we have to we have to stop using. We have to stop calling things behaviors and, and looking at them as reactions and or looking at them as um as signals, you know, to something's yeah. wrong. I need help. You know, people don't act up just for the heck of it. I mean most people really exactly. just don't act up right. for the heck of it. Right. Exactly you know, right. Yeah. Their goal is yeah, not why. to make your life miserable, but yet how many that's families right. <laughs> dealing with dementia think they're doing this just to get back at me? Yep. They're doing yep. this, and, and right. we hear that all the time. Yeah, and it's like it yes. has nothing to do with us. You know, it has um, nothing to do with I, us, and yet sometimes it has everything to do with us. You know, exactly. it's, I think right. you know it has sometimes <laughs> everything to do with what did we do just before that happened. That made mom get angry or strike out or made dad, you know, lock himself in the bathroom. You know, it has nothing to do with us, and yet everything sometimes is, is, you know, we have to start looking at ourselves. We really, really do. Yep, yep. I I think that that is great, great advice, and and how we go about getting people to to make that change. I, I personally believe is. You know, as speakers and trainers, we have to show some vulnerability that it's okay. And that's one of the things that I like about you guys in the way that you work is you're very real about your your situations and, you know, um, so open in terms of conversation Um, and and to not embarrass anybody or not shame anybody um, or not overcomplicate it, you know, and and get to the the core of – and and I – Tell me if it, maybe you'll disagree with this, but I think we have to get to the core of the feelings because the feelings are kicking our reactions out, and our reactions can be good, bad, or ugly, um, interpreted yeah. by others as that. But it, to me, all of our reactions are really coming from our emotions, if we know it or not. Um, and sometimes we stuff them, and then we explode. And right. Right. you know, and, and that doesn't change because you got dementia. You know, but we forget, right. we we forget how alike we are, yes. because we've been told forever we're so different. Right. We we That's often right. talk with 
with our students about stress reactions. So you know the the fight, flight, freeze. Um, there's another one called fawn and sleep. So we and the reason we talk about this is is that that stress response or that stress reaction is hardwired. That's from birth hardwired in you as to what your stress responses are going to be. So, mm -hmm. for example, I am a fighter. I will come out swinging. It may not be with my fists. It may be with the nice, beautiful words that kind of flow out of my mouth, right? <laughs> so <laughs> It may not so be pretty, anything, but it's there. They may, it <laughs> yes, they may not be pretty. And it's interesting, as we've, as, we've, as we've talked about this and learned more about it, I've watched me, and I've watched myself when I'm under stress and how quickly I can, on a dime, that stress kicks in and I fight, right? And then it's like five minutes later, I'm like, oh, wow, that, I just did that. But I have no, <laughs> I have no ability to stop that in, the, in that minute, right, when I'm under that mm -hmm. stress. And the reason that we think this is important is that, like you said, just because a person has dementia doesn't mean that their stress responses are going to be different. So how important is it for me to know that Mr. Smith is a fighter just like me? So if something stressful happens to him and he comes out swinging, I know why he came out swinging, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe I said something, did something, and his stress response is to swing. Now, Kathy's stress response, she's a flight risk. She's going to fly out of any situation, she's going to haul herself up in her room, right? So, yeah. so let's think about that. Just think if she has dementia at some point in time, maybe she's going to be with the resident that's in her room. And that's not a behavior. It's a stress response. So we need to take all these things and look at them and look deeply into the histories so we know that when something happens, okay, Mr. Smith was under some stress. I think he didn't like it that we changed his day of his shower or whatever that might be, so he started to fight. So it's important for us to see those things, look at the emotions, because you're right. You know, are you the type of person that stuffs all that stuff down and doesn't talk about it and then, boom, explodes? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I think it's important for us to look at all those facets and, and so we can build such a an even better, beautiful um, personal history for someone. Yeah, I well, think what's cool about this is in, in, in improv, we refer to that as the gifts, which is such a positive way of looking at what someone's giving us um, instead of terming it a behavior. And I think what's interesting is that when we look at a behavior or behaviors that, we've, that people term behaviors, um, you know, it's a gift of, of expression to us that we can take and move on forward. Um, of course, I had a beautiful thought, and it's completely escaped me at this moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I mean it's, it's just a different way of looking at it because are we care planning against nature? You know, mm -hmm. that's a question we keep asking ourselves constantly. We, we have students ask us, oh, well, we had to care plan this or we had to care plan that. And when we start to just excavate, and it doesn't take very long, you know, a five-minute roundtable discussion on what someone termed a behavior that they had to care plan, and we start to just look at it, we start looking at stress responses, we start looking at the stressors in the environment, um, body language, the way two people were interacting, you know, something that happened outside of someone's room that they interpreted. You know, then all of a sudden we can look at things and go, are we just care planning against what nature has already set in our bodies as our instincts? And how, how effective is that? We had a student say to us in one of our classes, so what you're telling us is everything opposite of what we've learned thus far. And mm -hmm. we turned to her and we said, and how has that been working for you so far? And she's like, got it, okay. You know, she's been in the industry 10 years, been care planning her wazoo off, writing these beautiful care plans, and has been finding herself writing more and more care plans rather than less because, you know, the approach of looking at, looking at what we're getting, what we're giving and what we're getting, looking at it as a gift rather than a behavior can completely change the game. Mm -hmm. So it can stop us actually in our tracks from care planning and make us go, okay, maybe the person I need to be writing an approach for is me, not right. Mr. Smith. I can't change what Mr. Smith is going to do. He has dementia. He has Alzheimer's disease. 
what's going to happen for him and his abilities are only going to decline, but I have the awareness to change myself. And so maybe the care plans need to be more on us than on other people. Very true. Very, very true. I, um, I love that that student said this is totally opposite because I, I think there's a lot of that going on. And it was, it's, I think people are shocked when they, when they're like, but, but, but that's not what we've been told. That's not what we've been right. taught. That's, that's not how it works. And, you know, I'm just thinking, how cool would it be when you're doing, let's say, let's say you work in a community and you're doing an, an intake, trying to get information and you ask the question of the family for each of them to answer, what is their response like, their response reaction like? Yeah. And what is and what is, and what is your, your parent or your loved one? And in a right. non shaming way, just saying, you know what, one of the things that we've found is that, you know, and, and we all know this, we all react differently. And so we can better help you if we understand what what's the dynamics here. Absolutely. And kind of yeah, Tammy and door. I yeah, Tammy and I actually created some a download um, called My Soul Purpose, which gets really deep into questions just like what you're saying. And we think that it's something that needs to be used in intake mm-hmm. with that person when we're talking to the family members or coming in as we're getting a much more in-depth social history on somebody, an emotional history on somebody. And, you know, to add on, getting that additionally from the family member, okay, what is your stress response when mom acts, acts this way or doesn't know what to say or gets lost, you know, how has that interaction been working? And it helps to really start to weed out some difficulties people have been having. And, and we've used this uh, download, this program, and, um, you know, with, with family members that are taking care of their loved ones. And it's really be- enlightened people as to what was a stress in their home and how they can now look at it a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, again, it gets, it gets people – it gives them permission in a safe environment to look within because people don't look at that stuff, you know, and, and that, it, it, that's the critical, that's the critical mass of, you know, how we communicate and what can we control or what can we change, you know, to communicate differently. So I love that. What was the name of the tool again that you said you had? It is called My Soul Purpose. Okay. And if you go to our website, you'll be able to download that. Oh, cool. It's a free download. Cool. So they just go to Dementia Raw to to download Dot that? Com. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. And there's a button that says free download. Okay. Well, get going, get audience. These ladies got lots of good information <laughs> and tools. DementiaRaw.com. Um, well, I can't believe that the time is just flying here, which I knew it would. Um, but I want to ask you about how your first year with your certification program went, and maybe you can tell people a little bit about the, the program itself. And um, Kathy, do you want to go ahead and kind of explain the program? Uh, so the program is called Certified Dementia Communication Specialist. And it is a program that's available to families and professionals. It is a 16-hour course. So we offer it in two different formats, either online, um, which allows people to move at their own pace. Uh, We have calls that run every Friday, and people can jump on the calls when it fits into their time schedule. And they can complete the course as quickly as two weeks if they're so motivated to do. Otherwise, it can take them eight weeks if they want to take that long, and that's what, you know, that's what their time allows. And then the other format we do it is in a two-day in-person intensive training, so it's two eight-hour days. And the CDCS, as we call it, is also um, accredited with 16 CEUs for most allied professionals, which has been great. Um, it's really helped a lot of our colleagues in the area, and you know, we've, as we travel, it's helped the colleagues there to really build up their CEUs and get some very, very different dynamic and confidence-building training. So we take this Dementia Raw method we have created, and we expand upon it 
we become very introspective. Um, we dig deep into everybody's own personal stuff in a way that can be very scary and vulnerable. And then we build on that with these rules of improv. Tammy has this phenomenal way of getting everybody involved. And whether you're on a call with us or you're in person and you're on the stage with us, she has this fantastic way of really building up people's confidence, uh, letting them tap out of a scene if they need to, but there's no shame or guilt involved. And, and at the end of a class, whether they're online or they're in person, everybody really feels like a cohesive team. So we've done a fantastic job this past year. Tammy, how many graduates would you say we've had? You are so good at keeping track of that. Oh, <laughs> that's the daunting part is keeping track of all this. <laughs> but we've had we've had close to 100 people go through the um, to go through the course. So we're we're pretty we're pretty geeked about that. Um, we're really excited. We have a two day event happening in Michigan um, in the Detroit metro area. And that's happening in January on the 15th and 16th. Um, so it, it's gone really well. Um, you know, it's, um, we love it. We love being able to, to spend this time with students. And um, what ends up happening is we have some really great, amazing conversations, and they learn so much from it. Um, we were very excited because our last two day, we had two family members that decided to take the course. And um, they seem to learn a lot through through the course that they through this training. So, so that's how it's going. Very cool. Very, I've I've heard just wonderful reviews. Just absolutely wonderful reviews of your program. Um, Mindy Bolton, who's an activities person Yay. here in Minnesota, um, she just adores you guys, and and I adore her too. <laughs> She's doing some. We adore some her cool as well. Stuff. She's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very fun. Very, very fun. Well, you guys also have some other big news. We've got about 10 minutes left. You guys, I, I heard just um, were awarded in a grant um, from the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. What's that all about? We sure were. Um, we um, applied for a grant, and um, we were um, totally surprised. They announced it at the um, it was from the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. They announced it um, at the Concepts and Care tour date in Chicago in October and um, totally surprised us. And if you know anything about me, I express all of my emotions <laughs> through tears. So I've got happy tears. I've got sad tears. I've got silly tears. You name it. So, of course, you know, with that surprise announcement, um, I became teary. But... Um, <laughs> I would we were super excited. <laughs> That's very exciting. Yeah, what it, yeah we're we're really, really, really um, honored that um, they believe in us so much, um, that they believe in um, you know what we're doing, and we really wanted to be able to create a program that is specifically for family members. So that this is what that grant is going to allow us to do. It's going to give us the opportunity to create something that's just for family members. Um, as we're putting this together, and it's it's all based on it, the the dementia method, it's based on the things that are in our book. But what we're we're working on too, not only will this be an online version, if some families would so choose to do that, but it will also be in a in person version as well. And we're working out some kinks with this, but we're also looking to work with some home care companies where it will allow the family member to go and do the training, but a, um, a, a home care worker will come into the house and take care of mom or dad while they're at the training. So we're working out some of the kinks to be able to provide that service for them so that they can oh, cool. get that, um, yeah, get that needed um, training. Because I think that's what is so difficult for someone to go out of the home to get that training is what am I going to do? Who can I, how can I arrange my schedule? That type of thing. So we want to, we're just starting to work on that. Um, our goal is to roll out the online version in January. The in-person version is probably going to roll out closer to um, February or March as we work with um, different companies to be able to bring this out to everyone. Um, and I think the other exciting piece for us in regards to this is it will give us the opportunity to work with some other really 
interesting organizations as well. So, um, you know, I foresee that we'll be able to um, really work jointly with some groups um, that provide some really fabulous services. There's an organization in New York that we would love to work with, and I think this will be a great program to work with them on as well. That's wonderful. Well, in the Alzheimer's Foundation of America, they're just a, a wonderful, wonderful organization. And I think what, you know, this grant is so, so needed um, to get to those family caregivers because, you know, people um, people are lost. I mean, this, this disease keeps growing. More families are impacted. And, you know, we've got to get some sanity in the game here with people and yeah. give them the support that they need. And so I, I'm, I just, I'm really excited for you guys. This is just absolutely, absolutely fantastic. So kudos to you and, and kudos to the Alzheimer's Foundation for recognizing the work that you're doing and the value that it has and the impact that it, that it has for, for not only those trained, but those living with the disease. Um, you know, this is, it applies to everybody, and that's that's what I love. And I, I think that, you know, we've gotten in this mode of everything has to be separate. Everybody has to be trained different. It's like, no, they don't. There's some really basic stuff here that applies to all of us. And the more we separate yeah. one another, the, the harder it's going to be for us to move forward because we're more right. alike than different. Bottom line. That's right. Yeah, yeah, we we agree with that statement 100%. You know, we we truly feel that if everyone from the family caregiver all the way on up to the administrator of a building all are speaking that same language and using the same tools, how much easier and less difficult and um, nail-biting is this going to be if we are all working from the same common language? I mean, to me, it seems like a no-brainer that we do this. Yeah, <laughs> this no, I right. agree. Right. I agree, and that's that's where I think we get the the bruises and the bumps on our head by banging our you know heads against the wall, going, "How do people not see this? I mean, this is just really right. such a basic standard that has been overlooked yeah. for way too long." There, there's a mantra that, that I, you know, Kathy's probably tired of me saying, and it's every time we create something or put something together, you know, I'm always, the thing that's always in my head when I'm working, wanting to create any of our content is why do we have to make it so hard? So it's always yeah. filtered through that, that comment of why is it so hard? Let's make it easier. You know, mm -hmm. I, it doesn't have to be that difficult. That's the constant thing. So I kind of filter, we filter everything through that concept. You know, why does it have to be so difficult? It doesn't have to be. Yeah, yeah no, I, I don't feel that it has to be. No, I totally, totally agree with you. And, um, you know, when I speak at stuff too, I'm just, people are amazed at the simplicity. You know, it's just like really, and oh, I, I can remember those are three words I can remember. You know, that is, that, I mean, that's a story that makes sense to me. So I can apply that because it's it's practical. You know, it's um, right. and, and that right. is so key. So people, you have to you have to um, go get their book. Start with yes. And what is the best way for for people to get your book? Is it through your website, through Amazon? What what would you recommend? You can actually right now go to our website. There is an e version of the book that they can get, and then they can also buy the the actual book itself. So if you go onto our website, and um, I know for sure if you're at dementiaraw.com slash programs, you'll see a picture of our book on the right hand side, and there's links right there to the e version and to the book itself. It will soon be on Amazon. Um, that will happen probably within the next four weeks, but I will also have links on our website once it gets to Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, again, I, I can't thank you ladies enough. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Again, we've been talking with Kathy Braxton and Tammy Newman, who are with Silver Dawn Training Institute, um, better known, I think, as Dementia Raw. Um, and they yeah. have such great, 
great information, insights, and training programs. You just don't want to miss out. The easiest way to get a hold of them would be through their website at uh, Dementia Raw, and that's just R-A-W dot com, Dementia Raw dot com, or their phone number is 219-649-1732. That's 219-649-1732. And don't forget, they've got a Facebook page, so just uh, in your search bar, put in Dementia Raw, and go in and like them, and... uh, Heck, you won't like them. You'll love them. So um, you're going to want to follow these, too. So, again, thank you both. Any any last comments, Kathy, from you? Oh, man. I don't know. It's been a lovely interview. We really appreciate you giving us the time to um, really expand on our egos even more, you know, because we really like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we love talking about ourselves. It's always my favorite thing is hearing my own voice. So um, I just appreciate you giving us the time, and I love that everything that we've been talking about, I, I, I hear you agreeing, and I can almost visualize you nodding your head that, you know, yep. this can be simple, this can be attainable, this can be done, and it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. And yep. that's exactly how Tammy and I feel. There's a way to look at this where we can put a positive spin on things, enjoy the connections that we can make when we can make them, and make this a way of life. Exactly. Tammy, how about you? Any last words? Yeah, you know, I'll do the marketing side of this for <laughs> since. Uh, <laughs> but I just want to let everybody know, if you go to our Facebook page every Tuesday at 2 o'clock Central Time, so in four minutes, That's um, right. <laughs> every Tuesday we do, a, we do a Facebook Live, so we talk about our concepts. People will send us um, situations that they're working on, and we'll work our concepts through them. Um, so, uh, like you said, um, we're not about doom and gloom. We're about really trying to help people work through this in the most simplistic of ways. And um, we'll share those ideas with you at 2 o'clock. And sometimes we're a little corny. So, hey. Yes, they are. <laughs> <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, again, thank you both so much for your time. And I wish you the best of luck in the future. I'm just uh, so thrilled that I was able to meet you in person. And if if you if if our audience you know if you've got the opportunity to meet these two ladies in person, well worth your time, and I think uh, money spent um, if you go to their training as well. So again, thank you so much. Um, in wrapping up, I just I just want to give a shout out also to uh, my uh, dementia chat experts who are all living with dementia. I uh, I just appreciate them so much. Um, for their honest, authentic voices. And if you haven't listened to those interviews, they're all free and on our website at alzheimerspeaks.com. You can also, on our site, download some helpful tips for um, communicating with someone with Alzheimer's as well. Just go to alzheimerspeaks.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out. We love hearing from you. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye now. Hey everybody, Jared Sebesti, your host of Retire Repurposed. This podcast is dedicated to help people transition into fulfilling and purposeful retirements. Retirement is a big life change. In fact, the two most dangerous years of a person's life are the year they were born and the year they retire. Few people could just flip the switch from working a career 30 or 40 plus years retiring on Friday without methodical steps to living what we call a repurposed retirement. To listen now, search Retire Repurposed on your favorite podcast platform, Senior Resource, or Life Audio.